Your doctor has recommended that you have a total hip replacement. This video will help you to understand the procedure. Let's begin by reviewing information about your body. Bones of the pelvis create the top half of the hip joint. The hip joint is where the pelvis and femur meet. The femur is also called the thigh bone. The hip bones fit together like a ball and socket. The hip socket is cup-shaped to hold the ball of the femur head. The hip refers to all the bones of the hip joint. The normal joint moves easily with activity, cushioned by cartilage with a lining that is smooth and slippery. When cartilage becomes damaged or wears down, the bones rub together. Moving the hip joint becomes painful and difficult. This type of damage is called osteoarthritis. Non-invasive therapies that may help manage pain and improve movement include weight loss, physical therapy, exercise, and medications. A hip replacement can be recommended when hip damage is interfering with daily life and non-invasive therapies are not helping. The purpose of the surgery is to lessen pain and improve function of the hip. A hip replacement can also be recommended to treat some hip fractures. During a total hip replacement surgery, the damaged bones and cartilage of the ball and socket are permanently removed. The joint is rebuilt with parts made of metal, plastic, and or ceramic. These parts are called implants. Screws and or cement may be used to hold the implants in place. There are different surgical techniques to replace a hip. The skin incision can be on the front, back, or side of the hip. The size of incisions vary based on the procedure and the patient. The surgical approach and implant for you depends on your surgeon, their experience and training, and your individual situation. Be sure you understand which procedure is planned for you. Now let's look closer at the total hip replacement procedure. The hip to be replaced is marked while you are awake. You will be given medication so you will be asleep and pain-free during the procedure. An incision is made near the hip joint. The surgeon works carefully through the layers of skin and other tissues to reach the muscles and tendons of the hip. And finally, the bones of the hip. The damaged femur head is lifted from the socket. The head is cut off of the femur bone. A hole is drilled in the top of the femur to hold the ball implant. The replacement piece is fitted and put into position. Next, the hip socket is smoothed and the matching cup implant is fixed to the surface. The ball and socket implants are brought together and tested to be sure the joint fits correctly and moves well. The muscle and tendons that cover the joint are put back together. The surgical area is checked for bleeding and the skin is closed. After surgery, Speak up and tell your care team if you have more than expected pain or problems. They will be watching for early rare complications. Most patients stay in the hospital for one to four nights. You can expect to receive antibiotics to lessen the risk of infection. You will have some pain, bruising and swelling, and you may have a drain near your incision for a few days. Physical therapy, also called PT, often begins on the day of surgery. You will learn how to move safely and how to use a walker, crutches, or cane. Continuing exercise with walking and stretching leads to the best results. Recovery often takes two to four months. You may find that anesthesia and narcotic pain medicine can cause side effects, including lightheadedness, itching, nausea, and severe constipation. Also, narcotic pain medicine becomes less helpful with pain after the first few days. 
You will find it most helpful to manage pain using a combination of medication, exercises to relieve stiffness, rest with hip elevation, and ice. Using ice packs wrapped in a towel, never put ice directly on your skin. Over 300,000 hip replacements are done every year. Fewer than 2% or 2 in 100 patients have a major complication. Potential serious problems related to this surgery can include bleeding, wound infection, heart attack, stroke, pneumonia, and a blood clot called a deep vein thrombosis, or DVT. A blood clot or DVT can form in the legs or pelvis during or after surgery. It can cause a lung complication called a PE or pulmonary embolism. Steps are taken by your care team to help avoid this complication. Medications to lessen this risk will be prescribed. It is important to take these medications as instructed. Risks related to the implant include infection that can happen weeks or years after surgery, implant failure due to loosening, breaking, or wearing down over time, and dislocation, which means the ball comes out of the socket. Some implants must be replaced to fix certain problems. After a hip replacement, you may have less feeling with touch or numbness near the incision site. Your leg lengths may not feel equal even if they are. This improves with healing. However, some leg lengths are not exactly the same. Shoe inserts help some patients with this problem. For the best results, follow your care instructions and call your doctor if you have a fever, worsening pain, swelling, or redness in your legs or at your incision site. Call 911 if you have chest pain, shortness of breath, dizziness, bleeding that doesn't stop, and or any other sign that you may be having a complication from the procedure. Hospital admission, medication, or surgery may be needed to correct some problems. To help your body heal, eat healthy foods, avoid junk food and sugary drinks, don't smoke, and keep your blood sugar under control if you are diabetic. Smoking and high blood sugar both slow healing. To avoid cancellation or complications from anesthesia or your procedure, your job as the patient is to not eat, drink, or chew gum after midnight the night before the procedure unless you are given different instructions. Take only medications you were told to on the morning of the procedure with a sip of water. Follow instructions regarding aspirin and blood thinners before surgery and arrive on time. You should be ready to verify or confirm your list of medical problems and surgeries, all of your medications including vitamins and supplements, your current smoking, alcohol and drug use, and all allergies, especially to medications, latex and tape. All surgery and anesthesia have a small but possible risk of serious injury, even some problems very rarely leading to death. It is your job to speak up and ask your surgeon if you still have questions about why this surgery is being recommended for you, the risks and alternatives. This video is intended as a tool to help you better understand the procedure that you are scheduled to have or are considering. It is not intended to replace any discussion, decision-making, or advice of your physician.